Hi, everyone. On Wednesday and then on Friday, we're talking about, with the two sections, about the effigy mounds of Wisconsin. Um, uh, these were mounds that really concentrated between about 900 AD and 1200 AD. And those are uh, really the, the main point of our classes this week. But here, uh, I'd like to give a uh, lecture about one other chapter uh, about mounds in Wisconsin. And these are temple mounds. Uh, and this will also, by the end, I'll be uh, giving the topic for, the, uh, for your week two essay that's due on Saturday. So temple mounds are different than the effigy mounds, right? So with, when you think about effigy mounds, you're gonna think about large fields of mounds that are shaped in different, uh, different ways. You have panthers and turtles and bears and birds and water spirits, right? And there'll be lots of these together. A second type of mound are temple mounds. Uh, and that's going to be what I want to talk about. There's a really good example in Wisconsin. The one that's behind me on the screen uh, is not in Wisconsin. It's in Cahokia, which is um, uh, near St. Louis. So I'm going to share my screen and go through some images of these temple mounds and talk about how they affect the way we see the effigy mounds. Okay, so here we are at a map of the uh, central part of the US. Uh, and this is uh, in about 1000 or 1100 AD. So this is well before Europeans arrive uh, in the Americas. And you'll see right there in the center is Cahokia where the Missouri and the Mississippi meet. Um, and the, the Cahokia was the capital city for what we call now the Mississippian culture. All right, so this was um, a group that developed more settled and more urban even ways of living in the Americas. And it was involved with agriculture, um, corn, uh, squash and beans uh, that they would grow. And the real marker for this civilization or really even a state you could think of it are these city sites. Now there's Cahokia, but you can see right there in the middle, but you see that they kind of spread out and get to a lot of places all the way down into Florida and Georgia, but then up north to what's known as Aztalan. Uh, Cahokia in its prime, uh, and this is the view, by the way, from Cahokia. You can stand on Cahokia and look out and see St. Louis there uh, somewhat in the distance with its arch. Um, here's a kind of an artist rendering of Cahokia from what we know about the, the mounds and the archaeological remains. This was a, you know, a genuine city. You can see a wall going around the city. Um, there were up to about 15,000 people, which doesn't sound like a lot to us, but that would be larger than London was uh, at the same time. Again, we're talking like 1000 AD or 1100 AD. Um, large playing field uh, in the center. And then life was structured around these giant pyramid-like mounds. Um, and these, this mound system and uh, kind of a city based on mounds are the kind of the hallmark of this Mississippian culture. Um, here's another view. You can see the kind of the central mound and then some subsidiary ones, and then uh, a stockade or wall running around it. And also note how close it is to rivers. I keep that in mind as we move up to Aztlan. Uh, as you walk around the site today, uh, you'll see these subsidiary mounds and also the larger mound, like the one that was behind me, where you can see the, the stairway going up it. Um, they've re they redo the stockades from the um, remains. You can see the outline. Uh, archaeologists found the outline on the ground and they kind of put in uh, burnt logs so you can get a sense of uh, what this would have looked like. And then you have to kind of imagine it being kind of plastered over with mud as well. Um, so now we go north to Aztalan. This is in Wisconsin. Um, and this is uh, a city laid out in basically like a miniature Cahokia, right? The mounds aren't quite as tall. 
the walls aren't quite as large in terms of diameter, but basically the city is recognizable as Cahokia. Also, when people first started looking at this, um, there were remains of agricultural fields on the outside of Aztlan. Uh, uh, and we'll see it's also right next to a river. So basically you can take Cahokia outside St. Louis, that's that major site. And then this kind of a miniature version of it is sitting here in Aztlan. And that raises some questions as to how we should understand this. So we've got the effigy mound culture from about 900 to 1200 AD. And right at about the same time, you have this other culture from the South kind of moving into Wisconsin. Um, and really establishing basically an outpost. There's probably good hunting, good resources here. Um, and it's at about the same time as all these effigy mounds are being built um, from about 900 to 1200 AD. Um, and that's something that we should think about and that, that, uh, uh, that we'll come back to. The other thing that's interesting is there's, there's a lot of evidence of warfare here at this site. There were human remains that showed signs of being killed um, and, and fire for the, for the walls and the stockade. So this was evidently not a completely peaceful invade, uh, uh, entryway by the Mississippian people, that they arrived and that there was warfare and friction at the very least. Um, uh, and, and, and so here they are kind of having what we could probably see as a colony established in the midst of the uh, later woodland civilization that was that was here in Wisconsin. And, and that's interesting, right? We, we, the way we kind of look back on Native American uh, history is often that it's just like one flat world, but actually the more we kind of understand about it, the more there are people movements and battles and warfare um, happening all over the place. And here in Wisconsin is a great example of basically a colony from a larger state to the South moving into Wisconsin, uh, into the midst of uh, a culture that had a lot of continuity. One way to look at the effigy mounds then is as, a, is as a response to this invasion of another culture, right? We are, if, if you feel threatened, that's a time when you really put up uh, more and more symbols and kind of mark your land and mark your place and mark your belief system. So maybe the effigy mounds were in part generated by the intrusion of these Temple Mound culture from the south. Um, if you walk around Aztlan today, it's probably the best marked of the uh, mound systems uh, in Wisconsin. And it makes sense because it's basically a city. Effigy mounds were burials and they were used um, intermittently by people who were more nomadic and getting um, uh, getting resources from by fall, you know, they would fall, travel around Wisconsin gathering resources. Ashland's kind of a, exciting in a different way because it's an actual city, big mounds, uh, and you can imagine basically suburbs and um, uh, city like features to it. And you can see the artist rendering here. Um, this is the main temple mound uh, today, not nearly as big as Cahokia, but still impressive. Um, and then it's also near a river, the um, Crawdad or Crayfish River, uh, and that runs along the city. So this is common at all these different Mississippian sites. They appear to have basically a cookie cutter version of their city, uh, just a smaller version of Cahokia that they placed um, throughout a really wide uh, uh, spread uh, of, of what we think of as the central part of the US. Um, also the stockade, just like at Cahokia, they had a stockade. These were traces of this, of wood posts and pillars were still in the ground. And then the people who put up um, Aztlan went back and um, put in all these uh, pillars themselves. So you get a sense of, of the size and what this would have looked like. Um, the, and the name Aztlan might strike you as, as a little bit strange. And, and it actually comes from the fact that early on, there were stories that the Aztecs had a land, their homeland was way up in the north. And so in the 19th century, um, when people found the site of Aztlan, they thought, oh, this must be the Aztec homeland. And so they called it Aztlan. So anyway, that turned out to be completely false, but the name stuck. And so we have Aztlan, Aztec land, basically, sitting here in Wisconsin. Um, but it doesn't have anything to do with the Aztecs and everything to do with this Mississippian culture that um, built temple mounds um, through the central part of the US and is based in Cahokia. Uh, here's a close up of some of the 
um, some of those uh, stockades. Um, and then here's an overall view. Um, this is again, you'll sense that this is much smaller than what we saw in the Cahokia artist uh, images. But here you can see the stockade and then the main mounds, some subsidiary mounds. And that area in green, they um, from uh, what was found uh, archaeologically, would have been more of the residential area. And then there's information as well about what their houses would have looked like. You can see um, uh, up here on the right, the outline of these houses uh, that were present. Now, um, one other thing that you can find is that on top of these mounds, there were various religious rituals, right? So um, uh, the maintenance of sacred fire in large open pits, um, and that these fires would have been kept burning throughout the year. Uh, they also had a green corn festival, right? So the, the thing to notice about this is that this is these are these are rituals that speak of stability and being in one place, right? If you're maintaining a sacred fire, you're not moving around the landscape. If you have a corn festival, you're agri you're based you have an agricultural society and you're watching the the crops, right? So in distinction from what we see with the effigy mounds, this culture is based in agriculture, um, interested in long-term settlement, um, uh, and also um, has rituals that speak of being in one place, maintaining a sacred fire. Okay, so let me turn from that to talk about, well, that's Wisconsin then, and this is Wisconsin now. And your assignment for Saturday is to do a little bit of pretend and think about you're an archeologist, a religious archeologist who comes to see the layout of contemporary Appleton and write about what are the values exactly that you see in the landscape. So two sites um, you should visit. You see the Home Depot um, outside uh, near the freeway uh, in the west side of Appleton um, and just look at it, right? We've got, a, we've got a nice, a large interstate freeway, lots of parking, the concept of a Home Depot, what do you get there? Um, the business, big box stores, a mall over here. What are, the, um, what are the values of the people who inhabit this landscape? So on Wednesday and Friday, what we're talking about are just the, um, we don't know the, the, the words or the exact myths that the ancient Native Americans who created the effigy mounds had, but we can make some observations about how they thought about themselves in relationship to the earth. And in a parallel way, think about how does this people of Appleton, suburban Appleton, how do they think about themselves in relationship to the earth? A second place to look is Appleton Alliance. This is probably the largest church in the Appleton area. North of Appleton, north of the freeway, you can see the freeway running by, you can see its position in these kinds of suburban house developments. What is this is, so this is a religious site completely. What is the relationship of this religion and this place to the land? Um, it, if, even if you can't, don't know anything about the Bible, don't know anything about um, uh, this church, I don't expect you to look anything up, just purely what can you observe from the layout of the land? What can you say about how this people, this place understands itself in relationship to the land, all right? So take the tools that we're using for the effigy mounds and that we did, we talked about that on Wednesday, but you'll, if you, if you, you we'll talk about that on Friday too, if you're part of the second group and then apply those tools to our own time and place. Um, and looking for a couple pages of thinking uh, about this topic for Saturday. All right. Good, I will see some of you on Friday. Remember there's new class on Monday, so I'll see um, everybody uh, the following Wednesday.